ബാക്ക്ഹോൾ മീഡിയ ഫോർ മൊബൈൽ റേഡിയോ നെറ്റ്വർക്ക് അജണ്ട പോയിന്റ്സ് ഫോർ ദിസ് സെഷൻ ആ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് ഓഫ് ബാക്ക്ഹോൾ മീഡിയ ഇൻ ത്രീ ജി വേരിയസ് ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ബാക്ക്ഹോൾ മീഡിയ ചോയ്സ് ഓഫ് ബാക്ക്ഹോളിംഗ് കൺസെപ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ക്ലൗഡ് റാൻ so first of all we will see what is a backhaul physical part of a communication network between the central backbone and the individual local networks is known as backhaul for mobile networks backhaul is the transport network connectivity between the core network and the ran and uh, another concept is front hole which is due to the introduction of small cells which is part of this transport network that connects the macro cells to the small cells here in this diagram we can have an idea of back hole and front hole the connectivity between sgw and the bbu pool can be considered as the backhaul network and then we have the connectivity from bbu pool up to rrh which can be considered as the front hole network mobile backhaul mobile backhaul is the transport network that connects the core network and the ran or cell site the connection between the cell tower and the rest of the world begins with a backhaul link to the core network a backhaul may include wired fiber optic and wireless components wireless sections may include using micro bands and mesh and edge network topologies interconnection between core network elements is done through the backbone network front hole versus back hole split ran architecture has reshaped the traditional definitions of front hole and back hole so in its earliest incarnation backhaul was simply described as the connection between cell site to bsc or rnc in the case of 2g or 3g front hall became a necessary addition when a new link connected centralized bbu to individual rrh front hall is connection in ran infrastructure between the bbu that is the baseband unit and rrh that is remote radio head front hole originated with lte networks when operators first move their radios closer to the antennas this new link was established to supplement to the back hole connection between the bbu and central network co now we will see the importance of mobile backhaul wireless and fixed line backhaul infrastructure is an essential component of the mobile telecommunications network mobile networks are ubiquitous and support a mix of voice video text and data traffic originating from and terminating to mobile devices so all of this traffic must be conveyed between the mobile cellular base stations and the core network the 3g and 4g long term evolution strive for more network capacity latency reduction and the need to deliver 
and enhanced user experience. In the era of 5G, where a network will be densified and more stringent requirement will be imposed, mobile backhaul will become even more important. Mobile backbone network. Now we will see the difference between backhaul and backbone network. Mobile backbone network is the interconnection of core network elements situated at separate geographical locations. As the bandwidth requirement is typically large, OFC or optical fiber cable is used in the backbone network. Microwave is also sometimes used in the backbone network particularly in those areas where laying fiber is not a feasible option. It may be due to difficult terrain, time constraints or economic viability. Now you will see the technology choices for mobile backhaul. The first one is fiber backhaul or the fiber based backhaul. Then we have the wireless point to point backhaul. As capacity and latency requirements has gone higher in 4G and 5G networks, copper based wireline satellite communications and point to point or point to multipoint wireless technologies are phased out. Here we can see a mobile backhaul network choices. So the backhaul can be a microwave link or it can be through copper link or we can have fiber based backhaul network choices. Mobile backhaul network choices. So the first one is copper where we are having the T1 or E1 which can be augmented by using various DSL technologies. Then we have the fiber optic in backhaul media for mobile radio network. So it can be using this CWDM that is course wavelength division multiplexing equipments each channel onwards or for higher bandwidth we can go for dense wavelength division multiplexing equipments which can support 10 gbps per channel and the maximum number of channels is 160 so different options are there in backhaul media when we use fiber can be done either through CWDM or can be done using DWDM. The traffic generated by LTE has accelerated the demand for fiber to the tower and has required mobile network operators to upgrade many aspects of their backhaul networks to fiber based carrier Ethernet. The main limitations of fiber are the cost and logistics of deploying fiber. Also, it can take several months to provision a cell with fiber optic backhaul. Fiber optic will remain as the main choice for backhaul. We'll continue with mobile backhaul network choices. So the next option is wireless backhaul microwave mini link micro backhaul is the most used technology due to a combination of its capability and relative ease of deployment we can have v band systems working from 7 gigahertz to 40 gigahertz or e band systems working in the 70 or 80 gigahertz range Backhaul links using the V-band or the E-band are well suited to support 5G 
due to their 10 Gbps to 25 Gbps data throughput capabilities. Microwave can also be used in line of sight or non line of sight mode which makes it ideal to be used in a chain, mesh or ring topologies to enable resilience or reach. Mobile backhaul network choices have LOS versus NLOS in microwave where NLOS or non line of sight is much more plug and play. NLOS backhaul needs only to be within a range of the receiver unit with OFDM providing a level of tolerance to multipath fading not possible with line of sight. Satellite backhaul can deliver 150 Mbps or 10 Mbps uplink or downlink. Latency issues due to round trip delay of 500 to 600 milliseconds are there. Low earth orbit satellites can be used to reduce this latency issue but it may require multiple satellites. Then we have free space optics which supports up to 1.5 Gbps with low latency. Then we have the Wi-Fi backhaul. The unlicensed nature of this technology combined with the growing interference from increasing public and private WLANs plus poor transmission ranges severely limits its deployment. Challenges in mobile backhaul There are a number of market trends that result in new challenges and requirements that must be met by the backhaul. Evolution of LTE Technical innovations occurring on LTE which is known as LTE Advanced Pro or 4.5G which enable enhancements such as improved peak bandwidth and greater energy efficiency for IoT connections. The peak bandwidth of 4.5G is around 1 Gbps which is 8 to 10 times higher than standard LTE and will enable support of video traffic at 4K resolution to mobile devices. Then we have the next challenge that is emergence of 5G. The 5G network will comprise both the new radio as well as a new 5G core network. The advent of new radio offers a leap in bandwidth speeds in comparison to 3G and 4G via the utilization of higher frequency spectrum. The higher frequencies enable wider chan channel bandwidths at the axis but also result in smaller cell size. The both have implications for backhaul. Network slicing. In 5G network, one concept of network slicing is introduced whereby the physical network infrastructure can be partitioned into bespoke logical networks or slices in the RAN and 5G core which are targeted to the needs of a specific application or use case. Slicing will impact on the backhaul network. Subscriber growth. Backhaul strategy or evolution must cope with both an increase in subscriptions as well as a large number of those subscriptions being high bandwidth users. Mobile data traffic growth. The increasing subscriber plus increased access bandwidth usage of those subscribers result in mobile data traffic increasing at a rate. Stringent latency requirements. Both 5G mission critical applications and increased video streaming will result in more stringent end-to-end -end latency requirements and impact on the backhaul latency budget. If higher latency backhaul links are deployed, example satellite links, then such backhaul would only carry 2G or 3G and non-latency sensitive LTE services. 
network densification the increased demand for mobile broadband results in the number of macro cell the new macro cells include both 4g and 5g technologies this results in extra traffic to backhaul as well as additional challenges due to the smaller cell size for 5g new radio alternative architectures for mobile backhaul optimization multi access edge computing computing and intelligence capabilities that were mostly centralized in the core network are provided at the edge of the access network this enables high bandwidth and ultra low latency access to cloud computing or IT services at the edge to be accessed by application developers and content providers. This can provide opportunities to optimize backhaul demand via caching or local breakout. Cloud RAN Cloud RAN is where some layers of radio access network are centralized to an edge site rather than at the cell site, which allows some of the processing capabilities to be focused at the edge site reducing the complexities at the cell site this architecture is suitable in the small cell era where only a little space and cost constraint is affordable at the cell site while the architecture may not be suitable for traditional macro cell base stations as they would need to process significant load of signal transmitted from or received by various radio elements heterogeneous networks with many small cells would benefit from this architecture as shown in <coughs> cloud ran in its two forms low level and high level splits significantly reduces complexities and capabilities at the cell site to be concentrated at the edge site the low level split is where only the physical layer is processed at the edge site while all the electronics are concentrated in the edge site this architecture allows easy installation and very low complexity at the cell site but comes at a higher friend hall cost as baseband signals would need to be transferred on the other hand High level split brings relatively less front hall cost but comes with more complexity at the cell site than low level split. So here in this picture we can see the traditional configuration central LAN or the low level split and split RAN or the high level split types of microwave RF carriers for point to point links microwave frequencies are generally assigned to chunks of 2 by 28 megahertz known as microwave carriers there are two types of microwave carriers it's microwave access carriers and microwave backbone carriers microwave access carriers refer to the microwave carriers in the frequency bands of 10 gigahertz and beyond these are assigned for short haul systems which are used to carry traffic through relatively shorter distances microwave access carriers are typically used in the mobile backhaul networks mainly in the pre aggregation part in india currently 13 gigahertz 15 gigahertz 18 gigahertz and uh, 21 gigahertz bands are used for the assignment of frequencies for microwave access carriers here in the table we can see the bands and the number of carriers
microwave backbone carriers. Microwave backbone carriers are assigned for relatively longer links. These are assigned for a minimum link length of 15 km. However, in the hilly terrains, microwave backbone carriers are assigned for a minimum link length of 10 km. Normally, carriers in the frequency bands below 10 GHz are assigned for microwave backbone carriers. In our country, currently 6 GHz and 7 GHz bands are used for the assignment of frequencies for microwave backbone carriers. Microwave backbone carriers are generally used in the backbone networks of the cellular network. This can also be used in backhole section if the distance of link length is more. Here in this table, you can see microwave radio frequency carriers frequency bands. The different frequency bands, frequencies in gigahertz, typical maximum link length in kilometer and typical minimum link length in kilometer are shown here in this table. Backhole requirement for different access technologies. For the 2G mobile access technology, the backhole requirement is typically 2 megabits per second to 4 megabits per second. Very large urban BTSs could require up to 12 megabits per second. 3G High speed packet access will require 12 megabits per second to 30 megabits per second for typical macro base station deployments. For long term evolution or LTE macro base stations will require bandwidth between 30 to 120 megabits per second with very large urban base stations requiring up to 240 megabits per second backhole capacity. RRH or remote radio head. A remote radio head also called a remote radio unit in wireless networks is a remote radio transceiver that connects to radio base station unit via electrical or wireless interface. The RRH is termed remote as it is usually installed on a mast top or tower top location that is physically some distance away from the base station hardware which is often mounted in an indoor rack mounted location. In wireless system technologies such as GSM, CDMA, UMTS, LTE, this radio equipment is remote to the BTS or Node B or E Node B and is also called remote radio head. Importance of remote radio head. One of the most important subsystems of today's new distributed base stations is this RRH. It contains the base station's radio frequency circuitry plus analog to digital or digital to analog converters and both up-down converters. Operation and management processing capabilities and a standardized optical interface are there to connect to the rest of the base station. Remote radio heads make MIMO operation easier. They increase the base station's efficiency and facilitate easier physical location for gap coverage problems. RRH protection in fiber to the antenna systems. So the first one is FTTA architecture that is fiber to the antenna architecture. This has enabled lower power requirements, distributed antenna sites and a reduced base station footprint than conventional tower sites. And this promotes 
the separation of power and the signal components from the base station and their relocation to the top of the tower mast in a remote radio head. Remote radio heads make MIMO operation easier. They increase the base station's efficiency and facilitate easier physical location for gap coverage problems. It requires surge protective devices or SPDs to protect the system from lightning strikes and induced power surges. With this we have come to the end of the session. Thank you all for your valuable participation.